Bambans in Somalia, <coughs> Bambans in Africa, in Chile, Japan, where thousands of people were killed. Then we turned around and had an earthquake in Haiti. 300,000 men, women, and children dead. What's the primary religion in Haiti? Voodoo is the first, and what's the second? Catholicism, which is witchcraft. God's not playing with us. Yes, this is the beginning of sorrow, and it's time to seek God's face. Now, you got to understand, the primary focus of praying is to magnify God and then to ensure that God's will is done here on earth. Somebody said you got to pray. In other words, prayer is able to actually abort the plan of the adversary. But it's called spiritual warfare. Any child of God that does not pray, and I don't mean a now I lay me down to sleep. I don't mean a uh, just praying before I go to bed or a quick little prayer before I get out of bed. I mean some serious, dedicated prayer time. You're still in spiritual warfare, but you're not using your armor. It would be the same as if I put you in an armor, armor, uh, 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 say the uh, Air Force, and I sent you out there with no parachute, with no machine guns, I just put you up in the air. What good are you going to be? None. You have got to use what God has given you in order to be in spiritual warfare. And prayer is the number one key. Come on. But I'm not getting fed. Listen. I challenge you, the best feeder, not yourself, God. He will feed you. He will teach you. He will reveal to you all things. Mm -mm. You'll never be able to defeat the enemy in your flesh. You must operate in the spirit. Why? Because demons are spirit beings. They do occupy people, but their primary function is spiritual. They're in the spirit realm making stuff happen. So we as Christians, many times, are so busy operating in the flesh, we never tap into the spirit, and that's why we're overcome. We're overtaken. Write this down. A demon can never possess somebody that has the Holy Spirit. He can possess a sinner, but he cannot possess the same. Why? Because the Holy Ghost dwells in you. And you can't have two spirits dwelling in the same body. God will not dwell where the devil is. You can take that to the back. <coughs> That's why I got a problem with saints that are depressed, oppressed, suppressed, stressed to the point of suicide. It's not biblical. The devil is a lie. You have the Holy Ghost. And the enemy should tremble when you step on board. Uh -oh. I, I'm in the word. I know I am. Matthew chapter 5. Read it in your own time. We don't have time to go through it all together. But I'm going to summarize the story for you and break it down. Many of you know it. Matthew chapter 5. We read about this crazy man who was possessed with many demons. The Bible says that he asked, Jesus asked him, what is your name, demon? And he said, legions. Legions is over 2,000 demons in one person. Now, was this man saved? No. Why? Because he was possessed. I just told you God and the devil can't possess the same vessel. Amen? So he's possessed with 2,000 demons. The first part I want you to know is that the devil seeks to dwell in humans. But he'll never be able to dwell in you if you have the Holy Ghost inside of you. Then the Bible says that this possessed man lived in a cemetery. And that he would cry day and night and night and day. And the Bible even says that he would take stones and cut himself with them. Have you guys ever heard of cutters nowadays? People that actually cut themselves. And I mean, they go deep too. And they say that as they cut themselves, even though it's painful, it's like when they cut, they're releasing pain. Somebody shout, there's nothing new under the sun. There was cutters way back then and there's cutters now. Listen, you got to see that thing for what
what it is. It's spiritual. There's a spirit that's causing that person to do that. I'm going somewhere to stick with me. The next, the scripture says that this man had incredible strength because people would actually try to bind him with chains and with <laughs> shackles. And that every time, because they were trying to keep him from hurting himself, every time they would capture him and bind him, he would actually literally tear the shackles off with his bare hands. They couldn't capture him. The third point I need you to see is no matter how hard you try, you will never overtake the enemy in the natural. I don't care how much you cuss them out. I don't care how much you tell them all. I don't care how much you whoop them. People with our children, you know, we try to beat them to a frenzy. I know I try to beat mine. You can't operate in the flesh. You got to whip out the spirit if you want to be successful. Somebody shout, the devil got some power too. But aren't you glad that the greater one resides in you? But the Bible says, greater is he that's in me. me than he that is in the world. Don't ever forget it. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. Here's where the story gets good. The Bible says that as soon as this crazy man sees Jesus, he runs up to Jesus, bows down at his feet, and begs him uh, to be his Lord, confesses to him that he is God. 